Welcome back to Midcap Radar. On to a corporate conversation now. And Datamatics Global Services is the company in focus. They recently acquired Dextra Digital, which is a Salesforce service provider, for 143 crore rupees. To discuss the business opportunities for this acquisition and more, we are being joined by Rahul Kanoria, who is the Vice Chairman and CEO of Datamatics. Mr. Kanoria, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Can you tell us yeah. more about this acquisition that you have made? Is this what are the margins of the acquired company that you have done? And is it going to be an EBITDA and EPS acquis uh, accretive acquisition right from the onset? No, absolutely. Uh, so we acquired it because of our focus on the hyperscalers. We've been talking about it for a while. We've been looking at some companies. So this is very much in line with our strategy. Uh, their EBITDA is at about 19%. So they uh, have a very healthy EBITDA and a very healthy growth rate. So from day one, we'll have an accretive uh, EBITDA as well as revenue in terms of a growth. How and how much would that be, Mr. Kanuria? If you can give us a sense of uh, how much of an accretion are you seeing? What kind of synergies will this mean? And will it give you uh, more access to newer markets or newer segments? Uh, more than newer markets and newer segments, it will allow us to cross sell their credentials into our customer base, uh, which is very important. Also, our scale allows them to uh, sign many larger deals, which today, because of the size they are not able to do. In terms of uh, digital technologies, the EBITDA creation will be about 0.9%, uh, and on revenue about 9.7%. On an overall data matrix level, though, it will be small because this is a very small company. Uh, so on an overall basis, the revenue will be about 4%, and EBITDA impact will be about 0.2%. If I prorate this number for the last nine months of last year. Right. Uh, Mr. Kanodia, can you quantify the number, the incremental revenue contribution? Like I, I, you mentioned it, for around 4% is yeah. the figure that you gave to the overall number. But is there yeah. a number that you can give since the company itself has a 60 crore revenue? So how much would that add to your own top line? Yeah, so $7.2 million is uh, their revenue for uh, estimated for this year. So that's really what it will add to the top line. And on the uh, EBITDA level, they are at about 19% uh, EBITDA. Uh, so you're talking about about 700k. Okay, all right. Uh, now let's talk about the cash in your books. 595 crores as of December. How much of this will be used for this acquisition? What will you be left with? Is there any other acquisition which is on the cards which we could see in this calendar year itself? So uh, we, so the impact is we are paying out about 143 crores up front, and then there is an earn out uh, over the next two years. Uh, so. So it's all from internal accruals. Impact on data management will be nothing. We are not uh, levered at all. In terms of additional acquisitions, uh, we are talking to a few companies. Uh, but as you know, we've been very selective with the companies we acquire. So we will continue to be selective and do a detailed due diligence. But yeah, we are in dialogue with some other companies as well. So do we hear an announcement anytime soon, Mr. Kanodia? Nothing, nothing, nothing on the cards that's going to happen immediately. <laughs> all right, all right. I had to ask you about the business as well, uh, Mr. Kanodia. In the December quarter, the growth slowed down. Both revenues were down, both sequentially, as well as on a year-on-year -year basis. You also attributed in the earnings call that there has been a delay in certain projects. Has that persisted in the March quarter as well? Have all those projects that were facing delays, have, been, have they resumed? And has they, have there been any cancellations as well? Uh, so we announced a cancellation. We cancelled the deal uh, because of the payment terms and we've announced that to the stock exchange. Outside of that, in terms of the quarter's performance, really, uh, right now, because we are in the silent period, I don't think I would be able to talk too much. Uh, but we had projected a 11 to 12% growth over Q3 of last year, and I, we will stay with that. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I would like to come back uh, to the acquisition. Uh, you yeah. have to make pay the additional 30.6 crores based on milestones. Can you give yeah. us a sense of when do these payouts happen? They happen in uh, 12 months from now and 24 months from now. So next two years, uh, there are milestones, there are targets that are set and basis that achievement, uh, they will be paid out. Okay, so it'll be after two years that you'll start making the payments, uh, these milestone payments, or no, by the, the second year you'll you'll complete all these milestone payments. That is correct. The first one will be after twelve months. The second one will be after twenty-four months, which will be the completion of the deal. Okay. Mm. Your third quarter deal pipeline, Mr. Kanoria, was around two hundred and forty-five million dollars. It was around two ninety million in the second quarter. What's the run rate we are going with right now, and is there a number that you have in mind for FY twenty-five as well? No, so that number remains steady, and I said because of the quarter ending, uh, Q3 
we will talk about this once the board meeting is over and we have our investor call. Uh, that's when we'll talk more about these. Things. But uh, it remains steady. Okay. All right. So, uh, I know you did indicate that you're in the silent period and you cannot give us more details. But generally, because we've been getting a lot of commentary, what is FY25 looking like in general? Not quantitatively, but qualitatively, if you can give us a sense of, is the pipeline strong and what is demand uh, at the end user level in different sectors? Sure. So, generally, it looks uh, healthier than the last year. Uh, so we don't are not really looking at sectors, but uh, by and large, the sectors are looking good for us. We are not so heavily dependent on the banking sector, which is having uh, a struggle, and many companies are uh, feeling the pressure in the banking sector. And because data matrix is not heavy on that segment, uh, we don't see that Im impacting our performance next year. Not exact. Not asking you for an exact number, Mr. Kanoria, but margins have slowed down to fourteen percent. Do we see yeah. that number going back to 20, 18, 19, 20 in, as, as we go into FY25? Yeah, as I said in, in last uh, investor call in Q3, we had talked about an improvement in margins and we will certainly see, see that improvement in the next year. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Kanuria. The stock is high by 2% of the day's high. So, uh, we'll see which way things go in quarter four. But you did indicate that FI25 is turning out to be better than FI24. Uh, we are in FI25 now. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was not very sure if I'm saying the right thing. But yes, we, uh, we are into <laughs> FI25. Yes, we need. And the stock is reacting to the management commentary. It's now recovering uh, a bit. It's seeing a bit yeah. of a spike in the last few minutes. So, our data matrix there, 2% higher at 590. FI25 is looking better. We are truly into FI25 <laughs> now. But before we slip into a short break, here's something you must not miss out on CNBC TV 18. And it is presenting India Exchange, where market experts and industry stalwarts will collaborate in insightful discussions on India's economic path and the evolving dynamics of the Indian market. Mapping the macros with City India economist Samir and Chakrabarti, catch a jugal bandi between market veterans Manish Chokhani and Ramdev Agrawal. The return of the animal spirit within India Inc. in a conversation with Vivek Dinathan of IDFC First Bank, KK Mistri and Manish Kejriwal of Kedara Capital and chasing alpha with market experts like Nilesh Shah of Kotak, Prashant Khemka of White Oak Capital and Anish, Anish Tokli of ICICI Prudential. Don't miss out on this one. Tune in to CNBC TV 18 on the 4th of April, 5.30 p.m. onwards.